Shalom, praise the Lord, and welcome everyone uh, to class. Jai Masi ki. Jai Masi sabko. Uh, welcome to all our uh, online students and also our e-learning students who will be listening to the lecture later on. Good morning, Lucy. Um, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Can uh, any one of our online students please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Daniel, Sam, Lucy, anyone who's there who can lead us in prayer, please? Nobody wants to pray? Yeah, I'll just... Thank you, Sam. Father, we just thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for coming us together uh, for class today. Lord, I, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us. Our hearts and minds would be open. We pray for Pastor Salim, Lord. Um, and I pray, Lord, that we would learn from you and receive from you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. It's too loud. I'm I have a loud voice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we were um, studying the um, the thirteenth chapter in receiving God's guidance, um, looking at um, the last um, you know way that God will guide us and lead us. We looked at. Um, 11 different ways that God leads us and guides us. And this is the last one, um, how God orchestrates um, uh, circumstances in our lives. So uh, uh, circumstances and divine orchestration. We already studied this when we were studying fulfilling God's purpose for our lives, uh, one of the nine guideposts. So we just looked at it very briefly. But most importantly, we looked at whether we should put a fleece you know, or we should cast lots um, like they did in the Old Testament and in the, in the New Testament just before the Pentecost. But we saw that, you know, uh, now since we have the word of God with us and we have the Holy Spirit, the inner witness, of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who speaks to us and leads us and guides us, we do not need to put lots or, you know, fleas. Okay, because God guides us primarily to his word and through the Holy Spirit spirit okay just a few more things that we've already discussed or spoken about but uh, just two more points in this lesson uh, 13 before we finish lesson 13 we already studied this uh, not every closed door is a no sometimes when we are pursuing god's plan and purpose for our lives if we want to know uh, what is god's plan and purpose for our lives we will face closed doors that means you know, dead ends, or there'll be like a wall, there'll be like a barrier, you know. So uh, not every barrier, not every hindrance, not every closed door is that God does not want us to enter. But sometimes he wants us to knock, okay, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. So sometimes we have to, you know, the hindrance can come from Satan. Sometimes God just wants us to knock. If we want, he wants us to pray through till breakthrough. Okay. So, so not every closed door, every hindrance that we face is from God. Sometimes God wants us to maybe, you know, um, knock uh, till the door is opened. Uh, there can be hindrances for different reasons, but we need to pray through till breakthrough, okay? And also that every closed door does not mean that it is not God's purpose for our life. He wants us to enter to the in the right time, in the right place, in the right opportunity, okay? For example, you know, um, Mary and Joseph, okay, they have... They, they came from Bethlehem, uh, you know, they came to Bethlehem, sorry, and there was no place. They kept going to every hotel, right, or every inn, and there was no place in any of those hotels or inn, okay? But that does not mean that what Mary had conceived in her womb was not from the Holy Spirit or it was not what God birthed in her. It was God's purpose. It was God's plan. It was conceived by the Holy Spirit. But because they did not get any room in the inn, it did not mean that it was not God's plan and purpose. Okay, It was God's plan and purpose, but he had a 
significant place where the son of God had to be born and that was in a manger. Okay, So it, that did not mean that because they went to so many hotels and there was no place anywhere, it did not mean that it was not God's purpose for their lives. It just meant that they had to be in the right time, the right place, uh, so that the Son of God can be born. Okay, So when you face closed doors or when you face hindrances or obstacles, it does not mean it's a no from God. You just have to discern or know what God wants you to do, what he wants you to pursue, what, where he wants you to go. And at the Kairos moment, he will open the right door. Okay. We already studied this. Not every delay is a denial from God. There are sometimes that are, there are de uh, delays from God. But why can be the delays? The delays can be because the appointed time has not yet come. The Kairos moment. For example, Joseph's story. Joseph, at a very young age, he had all of these dreams. But it took so many years of his life to be, for him to become, you know, to come to a place of position and leadership. Why? Because God was basically waiting for the appointed time. And also God was orchestrating circumstances in the life of Joseph. Okay. So uh, we need to be mindful of what are the circumstances God is placing in our life, what he's doing, what he's preparing us for. Okay. And also we need to know, if you read from Psalm 105, if you look at Psalm 105 verse uh, 19, it's in your notes, Psalm 105 verse 19, it talks about Joseph there from 17 to verse 22, but I like to look at verse 19, where it says, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Okay, so what was Joseph actually going through when he faced all these problems and difficulties? God was? God was? Testing him, right? God was testing him. Okay. So God was testing him. That means he was purifying him. He was getting him ready for his life assignment. Okay. So sometimes when there are delays from God, it just means that God is, you know, um, preparing us for the right moment. He's orchestrating circumstances which we need to know, discern. And also we need, he's getting us ready for our life assignment. So we need to be patient with God. Okay, the other things that are there in this chapter are all what I've already explained, so I'm not going to go in much detail. There are about um, five, uh, Ill, uh, you know, personal life examples that Pastor has mentioned. You can read that la later, so you would know how God orchestrates uh, circumstances um, in our lives. Okay, we'll move on to the last chapter in this um, in this uh, publication, chapter fourteen. Okay, again, all of this is basically what we have uh, spoken of, what we have said, what we have learned in the last, um, uh, you know, in all the chapters in fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And also what, you know, I have been speaking or teaching in uh, when we were looking at receiving God's guidance for our lives. Okay, so basically I'm going to just uh, re I'm not going to be saying the same things that are already mentioned here by just mentioning the important points, okay? So we've learned 11 different ways in, God, in the ways God guides us and leads us. In this book, we looked at 11 different ways God guides us, but these are not just 11 ways that God guides us and leads us. He speaks to us in many more different ways, in fresh ways, but which are the two primary ways God leads us? The word of God and the... Holy Spirit and the other rest eight different ways are secondary ways. So when we receive guidance from these secondary ways, whether it's dreams and visions, whether it is gifts of the Holy Spirit, angels, prophecies, times and seasons, circumstances and situations that God orchestrates, we always need to validate it, test it and um, verify it with the, with what? The other eight ways God guides us, we need to test it, test it, verify it through what? Or using what? The word of God and the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Look at what first, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says. It says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Okay. 
So two or three witnesses. So when you receive guidance from the other eight different ways, it's important for you to test it uh, or it should be established whether it's in the word of God or it is in you know, in a witness of the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes when there is no specific scripture that will give you guidance for a particular situation that you are going through, then you have to look at if it is aligned with the nature and the character of God. Okay. Now, sometimes you're looking for sp uh, verses from the Bible which is talking about specific situations where you need guidance and there is no a scripture. I don't think there can be. There's hardly, uh, you know, any situation that we go through in life which we will not find the scripture was. But in case, you know, then you depend on the nature and the character of God. You look at the nature and the character of God. And how do you know the nature and character of God? Again, you study the Bible, okay, which reveals the character, the, the attributes, the nature and the character of. Um, God. So all of the other eight ways that God guides us, we need to test it, verify it, validate it with the word of God and the inner witness of the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay. Now we already learned uh, that, you know, we will make mistakes. We, when um, we were studying fulfilling God's purpose for our lives, we said when we are fulfilling God's purpose for our lives, we're going about God's plan and purpose for our lives, we will make mistakes. Okay. But for us to know if God is guiding us, it's important for us to train ourselves to listen to God's voice. Okay, Like we read in John chapter 10, verses 4 to 5 and 27, that the sheep hear whose voice? The shepherd's voice, and they follow it. If there's a stranger comes, they will not follow the stranger's voice, but they will only follow the, the shepherd's voice. So we need to train ourselves to to understand and discern, to know when it is God speaking to us. Or sometimes it can be the voice of our own passions, our selfish, our own self, our own desires. And it can also be the voice of a stranger. And who is a stranger? Who is a stranger? Devil, yes, Satan. Satan is a, a stranger. So we need to, you know, train ourselves to listen to the voice of God and not the voice of the enemy or the stranger that is Satan and not the voice of self. Okay. So when we know God's voice, it will help us to hear his voice. And also we know it is God speaking to us and we can follow through. Okay. But we all can make mistakes and we know that God uh, can restore us. Okay. Um, and sometimes we are not able to see our own mistakes. So we need other people to help us. That's why we need each other. You know, we learned about this in um, uh, in fulfilling God's purpose for our lives, gifts and functions. We, in, we are interlinked as a body of Christ. We need each other. We are interdependent on uh, each other. So when we make mistakes, you know, we need to be open to for others to correct us, to speak into our lives and to help us and to get us back on course okay a very interesting passage is in isaiah chapter 30 you know in isaiah chapter 30 the prophet isaiah is rebuking the people because they were looking for help from egypt rather than looking for help from whom god yes you know instead of looking up to god they were looking for help from egypt and so isaiah says in isaiah chapter 30 that people have not only rejected god but they have rejected his law they have rejected the prophets and they have rejected the seers of god and they have finally rejected god himself okay but in spite of them being rebellious in spite of them being stubborn, you know, God has a beautiful word for them. He says, God says that he will wait for them to return to him. And when they return to him, he promises that he will teach them. So if you look at your, um, uh, in your um, publication, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and 21, uh, it says, there, can somebody read that please? Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and 21. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20 and 21 and though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore but your eyes shall see your teachers your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it whenever you turn to the right hand 
or whenever you turn to the left amen so here god is saying you know the the word uh, teachers actually is when you translate it is teacher okay and it's referring to the lord himself or god himself who will teach his people so god is promising his people here that even though they are in the midst of rebellion that god is saying that he will deal with them uh, you know when they come back to him he will correct them he will be their teacher and they he, they will hear a voice saying now this is the way now walk ye in it so you just imagine if the israelites were so rebellious and stubborn and god was willing to lead them and teach them how much more god is willing uh, to teach us and uh, for us to hear his voice saying hey this is the way now walk in it so god himself will be our teacher okay uh, so what do you do when you make mistakes you know uh, we look at the life of david we study the life of david in detail in chapter 2 we saw how david constantly inquired of god in any and every situation he asked god what needs to be done and he honored god with his choices and hence he was able to walk in wisdom so if you want to walk in wisdom the secret is that we need to inquire from god and we need to walk in the choices that or the will that he has for our lives and because david was able to do this he says in psalm chapter 18 verse 36 you know you enlarge my path under me that means god he's telling god god you made my way broad so that my feet can be on a broad path why has god made a broad path enlarged path for him because david was somebody who constantly inquired of god and he honored god with his choices but there are some times when david also did not honor god with his choices and what does he do at that time you know when he made a mistake look at psalm 25 he says in verse 15 he says my eyes are ever toward the lord so when he made a mistake where was his eyes on god right not on the mistake not what he had done but on god who shall you know save him and and uh, you know bring him back from the net or from uh, the pit or from the sin that he was in so when we make a mistake you know uh, where should our eyes be on god which means we go back to god repent confess and look up to god to you know deliver us from that uh, sin or that issue or that problem or from the net that we have fallen uh, into and look at what David says in Psalm 37 he says that his steps are ordered by the Lord even and God delights in his way God delights in your way that means he delights where you are going what you are doing what you're seeing what you're watching what you're saying what you're thinking okay and so he delights in his ways um, the uh, david says he says even though he falls down that means even though he falls into a temptation or you know into his own fleshly desires or he makes the wrong choices the wrong decisions he says you know god is able to uh, lift him up when is god able to lift you up when your eyes are on God. So even you make a mistake, a wrong decision, given to a temptation, given to your own carnal, uh, fleshly desires, remember to look up to God because God is bigger than our mistakes. Okay, He will work out His plan and purposes for our lives as long as we get back to Him. When we get back to Him, He will realign us, He will work in us and through us because no plans of God can be defeated. Amen? And he is the one who restores time. He will restore all the years that you have wasted. Amen. You know, he's a God who is a great redeemer. He's a great restorer. He will restore everything. But it's important for us to get back to God and to realign ourselves to his will and his plan. Okay. Before we finish this chapter, we look at some practical instructions where we can receive his guidance. How we can receive God's guidance correctly and accurately okay the first thing we need to do is you know um, we need to understand that god's ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts his wisdom is infinite i'm looking at this um, i'm under uh, looking at this um, subtopic staying on the side of caution and taking risks in faith okay 
So God's wisdom is infinite, it's great, it's incomprehensible. We cannot understand. And so God guides us in different ways. Okay, sometimes he will guide us through unusual ways that we have never even imagined. But we need to stay open and receptive. Now, there are two two ways we can be receptive. One is, you know, we can just take jump, uh, take that leap of faith like Abraham. God told him, leave your father's household and go to the place that I'm going to show you. So that was a leap of faith. Okay, so sometimes when God tells us we need to take that step of faith. But there are times when we need to be cautious. Okay, we need to look for sufficient details. We need to be absolutely sure and then we need to step in. Okay, but the beautiful thing is how do we know that it is God who's orchestrating things and telling us whether we take the step of faith or whether we're cautious or waiting for more, uh, uh, you know, to discern more about what God is telling us is when we take those little steps of faith, we will see that God opens up things for us. Things become much more clearer, brighter, and uh, it helps us to understand, yeah, I think this is the way that I'm going is right because it's taking me, there's peace of mind, there is uh, opportunities, Things are going well, and you know that it is God orchestrating and working things in your life. Okay. Um, now, sometimes when we are praying and praying and praying about something and we don't get an answer, what do we do? We have to stay with the last instruction or guidance that we have received from God. Okay. Sometimes you're praying about something and there's absolutely no answer. Okay. Um, God is not speaking to you. He's not leading you, which means what you need to do, stay with the last uh, instruction that you have uh, received. That means what you need to do, God is telling you where he has placed you, what you are doing now. Continue to be faithful. Continue to be consistent. Continue to be excellent for the glory of God. And when you do that, you will continue to grow, increase, expand, um, and move to new levels that God has already assigned for you okay and in the meantime look at what first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 says first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 can somebody read that please first corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 let a man so consider us as servants of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god moreover it is required in stewards that one be found faithful Yes, we are stewards of everything that God has entrusted to us, the time, the energy, the life, the calling, the talents, the abilities, the grace, the gifts, all of that. But we need to remain faithful. Okay. So even as you're doing that, you know, you need to be good stewards. Uh, wait on the last, follow the last instruction. If God is not leading you, just follow the last instruction he has given you. The other thing that we need to do, uh, you know, for us to receive clear guidance and instruction from God is to overcome selfish desires and overcome our stubbornness. Okay. So sometimes when we do some things, it can be the right things that we are doing, but it can be motivated out of a selfish desire. Okay. A selfish desire means a, a desire that is uh, not pleasing to God, is not glorifying God. Okay. And that is one of the hindrances that can hinder us from receiving clear guidance and, you know, moving, um, uh, 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 receiving guidance correctly and accurately from uh, God. The other thing is, you know, being stubborn. Okay. Uh, stubbornness is birth out of spiritual pride. And we know that God does not like stubbornness. If you look at uh, the Old Testament, you know, uh, Moses greatly feared that God's presence will not go with them because the people were very, very stubborn and adamant and wanted their own way. Uh, if we read this in Exodus chapter 33, verses 14 and 15, and Exodus chapter 34, verse 9. Okay, And we see that when Moses realized this, he prayed and asked God for 
forgiveness okay so we can't be stubborn having our own way doing our own things you know um, having our own um, selfish self driven mindsets and desires that is going to be a hindrance from us to receive guidance clearly and accurately from god and we know that stubbornness is a heart attitude okay um, look at what uh, moses says he, so moses says that stubbornness is a heart issue in deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16 uh, in the easy to read version it says stop being stubborn give your hearts to god okay so we need to come to a place where we are yielded totally submitted, totally surrendered in every area of our lives. We are giving him our will, our desires, our dreams, our passions, our longings, our plans, everything. And when we give him everything, when we surrender and yield and submit, you know, we come to a place where we can receive God's guidance and we can receive it accurately and perfectly okay so some of you might be saying i am not able to receive god's guidance in my life it can be one of these you know heart attitudes that are there and we need to check that and we need to um, you know overcome these things the other thing we need to do is uh, or we shouldn't be doing is uh, you know when you know sometimes when we are just waiting on god for him to guide us and lead us you know and we surrender and yield ourselves to god we begin to come to a place where we think, okay, God is going to take on the responsibility. I have sur surrendered and yielded everything. God will do everything in my life. No, we can't live life aimlessly or purposelessly. Okay, there should be a, there should, we can't live life aimlessly or without any purpose. There should be an aim and a purpose. Okay, we need to make plans and uh, preparations. We must seek God's guidance. We must seek his direction for our lives. And we need to work hard. We need to plan. We need to strategize. We need to prepare ourselves uh, to do what God has asked us to do. We just can't sit back and say, okay, God, now I'm going to take it easy. I yield it and surrender in my life. You just drive the car. I will sit back and enjoy the ride. Or you know, aap gaadi chalao, main piche bait ke aaram se so jaunga. No, you can't just sit back, relax and enjoy yourself. You have to plan, work hard, you have to strategize, strategize and you also, you need to take the necessary steps. It's a whole hard work and you need to be patient, diligent and you also have to have endurance, okay? Uh, the other thing is avoid distractions. We've already looked at it, so I'm not going to be looking at it. You know, when we get distracted, our focus is broken. Um, um, the other thing we shouldn't be doing is, you know, uh, we should not be inactive or we should not be indecisive. We should come to a place where we're able to make decisions and we are in a place where we are, you know, um, uh, you know, in action, okay? Even when we're waiting on God for him to lead us and guide us, it's not that, you know, we are parked our cars and we are waiting for God to show us the map or show us the route, okay? But what we need to do is we need to, you know, um, we need to um, uh, focus, we need to work, we need to, uh, you know, take action. We cannot be passive, Okay, we need to do what God is asking us to do. For example, Abraham's servant, you know, he was asked to go back to Abraham's household and to get a bride for his uh, Abraham's son, Isaac. Okay, so what did he do? He did not just stay back and say, God, I don't know where this place is. I don't know who this woman is. I don't know what is your plan and purpose. I'm just going to sit here in Abraham's tents and I'm going to fast and pray. You bring that girl here to Abraham's tent, okay, somehow. He didn't do that. What does he do? You know, Eliezer, he, he takes on the journey. He goes to Abraham's uh, place. And it says, while he was on his way, God orchestrated things for his for the plan and the purpose that he had come there to Abraham's household or to where Abraham was born and raised up. So we see his servant doesn't just sit back and fast and pray. He's not inactive or aimless. He's in action. He's moving. He's also waiting on God. And it says while he was on his way, you know, God 
worked for his worked on his behalf okay so you know um, sometimes we are called to wait on god but even when you're waiting on god it does not mean that we are we should be inactive or in or be passive okay uh, waiting on god is also being active it's not saying god you know i'm here i just want to be with you so don't tell me anything you just do what you want to do no that is not what we need to be saying we saying god i'm here you know i am with you but i'm ready to do anything that you are telling me to do okay so even as we are waiting on god we can't be inactive but uh, you know or we can't be passive we have to be active and we need to do and take those little steps that god is asking us to do okay and the last thing is avoid dwelling in the past and look ahead okay when you're driving if you're always looking at the rear view mirror you can't go ahead right you have to look ahead when you're running a race you can't look back because when you look back what happens your speed gets cut okay so even in life we have all journeyed through life we are at different points in our life um we have made mistakes we have had you know mountain like topic mountain top like experiences we had had difficult valley like experiences you know but don't live in the past don't dwell on your past failures uh your past just live in your past successes you know um your past disappointments hurts tragedies it's you know it's important for us to get up you know uh, face life continue to run our race and run towards the finish line because that is when we are going to get our crown that is waiting for us okay so get rid of the past just let go of the past start of fresh because god can make all things new in our life when we receive his guidance we just move ahead and um, he can do something that is uh, you know much exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask think or imagine and the future that he has for us is something that is great something that we cannot even think or imagine and he can lead us to the highest and to the best because he's a god who loves us he has great big plans for us but don't you know look back and that will cut your speed that will prevent you from moving forward okay so just a few things that you need to keep in mind uh, even as you um, wait on god to receive his guidance correctly and accurately okay any questions any questions Online students, you have any questions from this last chapter? While waiting on God, Akil asked. While waiting on God, what is best for us to do from our side? Uh, while we are waiting on God, is good to do what last instruction God has given us. Okay, uh, it doesn't mean that we are in a place where we don't have any direction or no leading but already in a place where we are doing something god has asked us to do continue doing that being a good steward being faithful sincere uh, consistent being excellent and also even as you're waiting on god for the next move for the next season uh, you know um, prepare yourself to listen to god and even as he's revealing things you know uh, or he's uh, he's revealed something to you pray about it and also begin to plan and strategize to see how you can you know move into the next season or the next plan or the next move of god uh, for your life so it might be learning some courses it might be uh, you know meeting some people in that same field getting some experiences um, you know rooming away things in your life weaknesses that are there um you know asking god to deal with those uh, wrong heart attitudes um also just praying strategizing planning uh, so that you are ready for the next move of god uh, even as you're waiting for the kairos moment to happen for him to bring you the next season or the next move okay so maybe for example if you are a student and you are almost coming to the near end of your course you want to know which 
um, you know, which field or which place you want to go to work, whether you want to continue doing further studies, whether you need to work, uh, which um, which uh, place um, is a good uh, company or a good office to work in. So you, you just can't sit down and keep praying and say, God, give me a download, you know, from Google. Just show me like Google will show me all the options and I will take the first option and all that. No. You go and speak to people in that field, you ask them which is a good opportunity, which is a good company. You go and look up those companies, you find out, you prepare a resume, you find out how to go and you know how to equip yourself for interviews so that you can do excellently well. What are the co what are the requirements for those um, specific uh, you know positions that you need, whether you have those skills, those expertise, you know, or whether you should go in for further studies. You, can check with others who have done that course, look for the right college. So all of these things are so many things that you need to do even as you're waiting on uh, God. Does that help, Akhil? OK. Uh, Get Truth says, how do you advise unbelievers not to dwell in the past? Uh, you can give them practical examples, like you can say, you know, when you're driving or uh, when you're walking, if you continue looking at the back, you know, it will hinder you from moving forward. It will, you know, uh, stop you from going ahead. It will also, you know, uh, falter your steps. You can fall. Um, also, you know, you can tell them the past is past. It's gone. You can't do anything about it, right? There's no way you can bring those days back. There's no way you can relive or redo what you have done. Uh, it's important to not just... Uh, uh, it's important to look at the past, but to learn from our mistakes and move ahead, okay? Because everybody is moving ahead, you know, and every day has new opportunities, new um, new horizons that we can reach, new things that we can learn, new places that we can go, you know? So don't hold on to those baggages. And you can say, you know, when you keep on holding on to your baggages, it's 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 tiring. It will hinder you from moving ahead. Just drop everything, let go of everything, and you know, uh, move ahead to what God has for you or uh, to the things that are there in the future. But all uh, carrying on what you have learned from the past will also help. Okay, did that help, mm -hmm. Gertrude? Yeah, thank you, sister. Yes, thank you, Gertrude. Lucy, how do we know when to stay safe and when to take risks of faith following God's guidance? Um, yes. Um, sometimes risks of faith, uh, you know, good question. Uh, can you know have this, for example, in for my life, when, um, when God called me to full-time ministry, I knew it was God calling me to full-time ministry. I knew I was not hearing my own voice of Satan. I knew it was God. And when the time came and I was not having any open doors, you know, every door was shut on me. And I was asking God, why is this happening? Why didn't I get admission to any college? And then he reminded me that, you know, I have to go to Bible college. Okay. So, of course, uh, like, you know, my dad was not for it then. Um, he wanted me to do some other courses before I stepped into Bible college. Um, but, you know, I had to take that step of faith. So that was a step of faith which I took, irrespective of my, my father saying no, irrespective of me, you know, um, not wanting to go to Bible college. It was just the call of God. Um, but, you know, uh, giving into God's will, that was taking a step of faith because I didn't know which college, where I'm going to go, where my fees are going to come from, and all of those things. Okay. Now, um, when to stay safe? Okay, so when I'm going to the Bible college, um, I know I have to go to Bible college, so I don't go and to any Bible college. Okay, so I need to choose the Bible college, uh, which I know is uh, going teaching sound biblical principles, values. So I check with the pastors. They studied in that Bible college. They told me. I prepared myself to know what, how Bible college is, what are the things that we require, how hostel life is, because I've never lived in a hostel, and all of those things. So, you know, um, then my fees, uh, scholarship, and all of those things. So those are the things I need. I Even though I take, took the step of faith, those are the things that I had to work on. And, you know, how as a young girl going to another uh, state, staying in another place, um, you know, 
safety things that I had to think for myself. So all of those things and knowing if that Bible college was the right Bible college for me, because in Bangalore itself, we had some good Bible colleges. Why go to another place at like Pune and study in that Bible college? So I had to take time to look, research, find out, wait on God and all of those things. OK, so did that help Lucy? Yes, sister. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any any other questions? Ma'am. Uh, Ma'am. Yes. If someone's past disturbing him or her again and again, so is it from Satan or because of it's it was too deep, so that why is disturbing? Yeah. Sometimes our past is too deep that you know we can't get over the abuse or the hurt or the brokenness and the pain. It keeps coming back again and again. But we need to ask God to heal us. You know, He is the healer. He is Jehovah Rapha healer. He, he will heal us. Uh, he will restore our soul. You know, so uh, so when those thoughts come back, we need to just ask God to uh, spend time just praying and worshiping and asking God to heal and restore us. Sometimes when you know it can also be Satan. But uh, there's a saying: whenever Satan reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. You know, so it's reminding of your past so that you live in the past and you don't move ahead. Okay, it's showing that how terrible you are, how bad you are, you are not fit, you're useless, uh, you're wretched, you can't do this, you can't do that. How can you serve God? How can you preach? And all of those things that is just to demotivate you and put you down and to bring you in a place of brokenness so that you are not able to pour out God's anointing. So that time you need to also be discerning and know and, uh, you know, just uh, rebuke Satan, uh, tell him that your past is dealt with, you're forgiven, it's cleansed, you are healed, you are restored, and that you can just move on, move ahead and that you will, God has greater things for you and you will do greater things. Yes. Okay, uh, Lucy says, practically, how do we guide a person when he's experiencing close doors in their lives? Uh, basically, you need to know, Lucy, whether it is, uh, you know, heart attitudes like uh, unforgiveness, stubbornness, pride, selfish interests, agendas that is not there. They've not submitted, yielded their lives totally to God. Um, and also know is whether they're knocking on the wrong door uh, or, you know, they put they. You also need to look at, you know, we learned about positioning ourselves. We need to position ourselves in the right place, the right time. Uh, so whether the uh, to help them discern whether it's a right time for them to enter into it or they are, you know, just rushing ahead of God or whether they are in the right place, the right position to receive God's blessing, the right heart attitudes uh, that they're having. Otherwise, they need to deal with it. And uh, if they're knocking on the right doors, like Joseph and Mary were knocking on the wrong doors and God had a different place for them, even though he had this, the purpose was the uh, same. So I think uh, you need to help them, uh, you know, uh, discern, ask God to check their heart, their heart attitudes, uh, help them understand the Kairos moment and the Kronos moment, whether God is preparing them for it, um, and also whether they are in the right place, the right uh, position, you know, where God wants to pour out his blessing. Did that help, Lucy? Okay. Thank you for the questions. Interesting. Anyone else has any questions? Yes. Yeah, Pastor. Morning. Yes, Anusha. You Pastor, can take this. I'm a doctor and God placed me in the department, which I don't like actually. It's pediatric oh, cardiac. Sorry to interrupt, Anusha. Sorry to interrupt. We can't hear you, right? It's not very clear. Cyril, can you help, uh, please? Is fine now? Yeah, this is a little better, a little louder, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by profession, I'm a doctor. And I placed recently in pa pediatric cardiology department. Uh, basically, I don't like uh, pediatrics, which is children branch. And I'm finding difficulty to serve Lord there, I am so adamant and stubborn doing the work, I don't know. I am asking God again and again, please, I don't want to be here. 
Oh, sorry, Aksha. We're really not able to. We're really not able to hear you clearly. I think it's echoing here. I understand that you have a important concern. So, if it's okay with you, can you please take some time to um, type it out in the chat? Even though it's going to take some time, um, we will wait for you to type it out, and then we will answer your query. Because uh, anyway, Master, Master, not... uh, excuse me, sister. She's yes. saying that she's working in she's uh, working in cardiology uh, children's department. Uh, and she's not too happy. She's doing it against her will to work there. Her concern is about uh, working in a place that she doesn't like. Okay. Yeah, but after that, uh, I, she did not say anything. She's, I think okay. better she writes. Okay, thank you, uh, Gertrude, for, uh, yeah. for interpreting it for us, uh, clarifying it for us. Yes, I got it. I think you wanted to do cardiology, but you are in the pediatric uh, department. You're not enjoying it there. We got that much, Anusha. So, uh, so you're asking what you need to do now? OK, can you please take some time to type it out? We'll, um, we would like to know your full query so that we can help you and uh, you know, answer that. So you can take your time. OK, I'm not, in, I'm not interested in pediatric cardiology department, OK? But God placed me there. How do you know that God has placed you in the pediatric cardiology department? OK, I, um, I like to ask, uh, why do you say that God has placed you there? OK, so you can go out and type out your whole thing. And then we would, uh, you know, we still have 10 minutes of our break time. So you can take your uh, time and type it out. And then we can answer your question. OK, I'm so sorry that we couldn't hear you. Anyone else has any questions? Yes. What happened? So OK, uh, tell me. OK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, so there's an in-person student here who says that he prayed one day and said, God, please handle my life. And then the next day onwards, he found he was facing continuous problems and difficulties. OK, so um, don't be disappointed can just be Satan who is trying to stop you from giving and submitting and yielding your life totally to God and God moving in your life and you enjoying God's plan and purpose. He wants you to just kind of uh, be shaky in saying, hey, you pray that prayer, God is not helping you. See, there are more problems and difficulties. But I think the more you press in, the more you depend on God, you know, the more you are going to see a breakthrough you are going to see god's blessing in your life because god has not envisioned uh, a plan for you where your life is going to be disturbing distressing disappointing frustrating and all of that you know it's going to be a life where there's the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy you're going to enjoy all of that yes there are going to be challenge and difficulties but even in the midst of challenge and difficulty you will enjoy his peace and his joy so the more you dwell on god's word the more you feed on god's word meditate read god's word you know pray um, um and uh, just uh, worship god the more you're going to see breakthroughs the more you're going to see god move and go, the more you're going to see your life being a blessing to others and to yourself okay um any other questions OK, if there are no questions, we are going to move on to our next last publication. I have this uh, task to finish these 11 lessons in by the end of November. So we see how we can go through this. OK, um, so we are going to look at the book Code of Honor, the publication Code of Honor for all the online students. I have posted this on the stream page. And all the in-person students, I've made sure that you have one copy on your desk. So all the um, um, 
online students, you can access it from the stream page, please, uh, on the Google Classroom. Uh, we, are look, we will look at um, chapter one, okay? We look at chapter one after we come back from our break. Okay, so we can go for our break now and then we can come back. And Anusha, we we'll wait for your for your query question. Thank you. Thank you. 